What's going on guys, your boy Terry by Reacts here and first let me apologize before we jump into this reaction Let me apologize once again like on the last video that you might might have seen my uh, my season 8 teaser reaction Or first look if you want to call it that um, I must apologize for the past couple of days I did promise you guys that I was going to put out um, some the lore theory videos um for the week but i didn't get a chance to record anything for the past couple of days so i'm really sorry about that anyways i had planned to make this week a barristan sell me week because we've never done any barristan sell me videos um guys who knew who watch my reactions of game of thrones um you know that barristan sell me was my guy he was my guy from the minute he walked from they dismissed him from the King's Guard from Cersei dismissed him from the King's Guard and the way how he went out like a G. I was like, yeah, there's my boy right here. I was glad when he showed back up, saved the nearest from that whatever that shit was, and I was excited. Right? Um didn't like how they killed him. Um, and then you guys were telling me, oh my god, Barristan Selmy is such a better character in the books, and this and that and whatever. And they kind of never did him justice in the show. So, I had dubbed this week to do just Barristan Selmy videos for lore video, lore, history, whatever you want to call it. So, we're going to jump into the first one here. This one is not too long. It's only about 10 minutes. Um, and then... And then I'm going to schedule the other ones, the longer ones, because this is someone, I think one of them is like an hour long or something like that. Um, I'm anxious to learn more about him. You guys said he's legendary in the books. You know, he's legendary. He's not dead in the books. I think you guys said he, he's not dead in the books. Um, but he's just a great character all around. So let's go learn a little bit of the history here, and we'll continue from there. Okay, so let's jump into this. I'm excited to see something about him according to the book. So let's go. This one is called Sir Barristan the Badass. So let's go. Barristan the Badass. Well, his name is Barristan Selmy, and his real nickname is Barristan the Bold, a name he mm. earned at a very young age. I usually don't do these character profile videos unless Game of Thrones decided to drastically cut their story short on the show like what they did with the Three-Eyed Raven. Barristan is another one that fits this category. His death on the show was extremely anticlimactic and very little backstory was shared about his interesting life. Yeah, I didn't like how they just killed him. He, I think he could have been a way better advisor towards Daenerys going forward. Come on, it took out like 10 of them dudes. Like, it was nothing and then they killed him. I was like, come on man, let the man have his moment. At 10 years old, he entered attorney as a mystery knight. No one took the child seriously, Ten. laughing at him, all except the Prince Duncan Targaryen. Duncan jousted the young Barrison and obviously defeated him. He gave him the nickname Barrison the Bold for what he did that day. This wasn't some street kid looking for trouble. Hal Selmy ruled under the Baratheons in the Stormlands as lords. Barristan was the eldest son and next in line to rule if he never got chosen to join the Kingsguard later on in life. When he was 16, he entered another tourney as a mystery knight, and once again faced off against Duncan Targaryen. Not only did he defeat him, but he also defeated the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, Duncan the Tall, who Prince Duncan Targaryen was named after. King Aegon V, impressed with his skill displayed, knighted Barristan himself. He would go on to win multiple tourneys and has defeated the greatest fighters in the Seven Kingdoms, including Robert Baratheon, Oberyn Martell, Rhaegar Targaryen, and even the Hound at age 60. He's been mentioned being the champion of more tourneys than any other character. Even though that doesn't necessarily mean he's won the most, it definitely means something and it hints at that. 
He wasn't only a skilled tourney fighter, however. He even had a reputation on the battlefield. Barrison pretty much single-handedly ended one of the biggest threats to ever face Westeros. When a Targaryen bastard believed he should sit on the Iron Throne, he rebelled with his own army under the new name House Blackfire. The first Blackfire that. Rebellion was a failure with many lives lost on both sides. House Blackfire, who were exiled from the Seven Kingdoms, would continue to be at war with House Targaryen over a few generations. In their fifth rebellion, Maelie's Blackfire, or Maelie's the Monstrous, would lead this battle in an attempt to become the king over his Targaryen relatives. Maelie's garnered the nickname the Monstrous, and it will make sense once you hear about his appearance, strength, and behavior. He wasn't the only Blackfire interested in the Iron Throne. His cousin Daemon wanted command over their army, and this led them to a battle where Maelie's killed his horse with a single punch and then twisted his cousin's head off with his bare hands. A true monster. Maelie's mother... Wait, wait a minute, bro. We're not going to just slide over that like you didn't just say. This guy just punched a horse one time and killed it. Like, like we not gonna just, we not gonna just slide past that, bro. Did we talk, this some anime shit? What, what, what in the world? I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I know we got strong dudes in the in this in this verse of game of thrones right we know that we have strong people okay we know we got them out that we have the hound but bruh punch a horse and kill the horse bro one time it wasn't even a battle and then he beer handedly twisted his cousin is what is it his cousin he said right let, let, let's go back a bit here, man. This is freaking ridiculous, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. His cousin Damon wanted command over their army, and this led them to a battle where Maelius killed his horse with a single punch and then twisted his cousin's head off with his bare hands. A true monster. Maelius' mother was expecting twins while carrying him, but while in the womb, Maelius supposedly ate his twin, and to this day, has a small fetus head attached to his neck as a deformity. He also has a huge and unproportional upper body, giving him abnormal strength. Barristan, being as bold as he is, stepped up to the challenge and fought Maelis in single combat. He managed to kill the monster and immediately ended the war. What made this win so significant is that this was the last male Blackfire alive, ending all the Blackfire rebellions. He became the hero of the Seven Kingdoms, and it wasn't long after that he was sworn in as a member of the King's Guard under King Jaehaerys II. Jaehaerys II didn't rule for very long, and after he died young, his son Aerys II ascended the Iron Throne. Barristan is one of the infamous noble, honorable characters similar to Ned Stark. Aerys was crazy, but he stayed loyal as one of his King's Guard, even going to extreme lengths to save his life. He was already a hero for what he did during the war, but what he did during the defiance of Duskendale made him a saint. The Mad King Ares II was kidnapped while in Duskendale by Lord Darkland. For six months, Ares was held captive and Tywin Lannister, as Hand of the King, believed it would be best to storm in an attack, which would result in Ares being murdered. Barristan volunteered to stealthily attempt to save Ares alone, and Tywin accepted giving him one day. Barristan Selmy dressed as a beggar and climbed his way up the castle walls. He found the dungeons and freed Ares. Everyone that was in his way was slain. Even after the alarm sounded, the only injury inflicted to him was a single arrow to the chest. You finally get to hear more about the human side to this badass during the tourney at Harrenhal. This how they do, Mr. Barristan, in the show, for real. You have a character like this in the books, and this this soft ass shit they bring to the show. You see, this is why I I, I I'm being. This is why I'm very objective about the subject, and this is what I'm saying. 
you can write a lot about a character a lot write written word about a character but when it comes to tv shows it's like oh my god you know what i'm saying the stuff that they could do with these characters and then you know they i mean they come with this weak ass shit and then they let you the thing about it is this if you're gonna have a character like this and you're gonna throw him out in a way you know what i'm saying like throw him out in a way whereas in he's not gonna mean that much to the progression of the story and i get that because he didn't really mean much to the progression of the story that was being told on hbo in game of thrones he didn't mean that much i get it what i don't understand and what i don't get is that you have characters that, and this is what I'm saying. It's like there was too much rushing going on, and 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 that's what I don't I don't understand what HBO was trying to do. What were they trying to accomplish here? Because was the show getting too expensive? I I just don't understand. It's just like if you're gonna have, as I was saying before, if you're gonna have a throwaway character. Don't let the character have any meaning in the show, man. So that when the character goes, you're not like, oh, you're not like, oh, my God, we knew this character was supposed to mean more in the show or more to the story. Right. I mean. I mean, was it because he was old? Is that the explanation that they have in the show? No, that wasn't it. I mean, the guy is around here doing superhuman stuff. The man basically took down a freaking he basically killed Superman in the books and then you bring him into the show and he, he should have been taking down them sons of harpies like they're nothing, bruh. The feats? Check out the feats that this guy have. He, I don't care what nobody want to say. Oh, it was in a tight space. None of that shit matters. <laughs> The guy is a freaking beast. You cannot take out a character. It's like, it's kind of like knowing that somebody is great and you write them to be dumb. And that's why a lot of people, they don't like the later seasons in Game of Thrones because Tyrion is off the chart. He, he is the smartest guy in Game of Thrones, bar none smartest the smartest guy above everybody else he has the smarts he may not be the best fighter but he is the smartest when you're talking about brain power Tyrion is it my friend and i think he's smarter than his daddy i don't really want to hear what nobody want to say if he was smarter than tywin he is smarter than tywin to me overall tywin is smart he's cunning but to me in certain ways tywin is a freaking coward He's a coward. Yes, he likes to take the glory. He goes, he, 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 he's a, the undercover guy. He's not the straight up guy. He's not Barristan. You know what I'm saying? He's not the one. He's not going to take up the challenge, okay? Okay, that's my impression of him. Like, he does a lot of underhanded things. Like, how he got in to kill the Mad King. Well, he didn't kill the Mad King, but how they took over by joining the, the 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 whole rebellion robert's rebellion and stuff i didn't like how he did that he didn't go in you know what i'm saying to storm the castle or to sack the castle as they would say he didn't do that he basically tricked them you know what i'm saying so that's what i'm saying i'm not saying that he's dumb don't get me wrong as i said Tyrion gets his smarts from Tyrion. Tyrion gets his smarts from tywin but i think Tyrion was smarter than him I think Tyrion, or maybe I could maybe I could say that Tyrion, in in certain in certain sense, Tyrion wanted peace. I think Tywin wanted the same thing, but he kind of went about it the wrong way to get his family into the, into the the seat of power. And I didn't like I didn't I don't, I didn't like how he went about it. He was a great character. Don't get me wrong, in the show. And so far, what I've learned about him in the books, he was a great, 
character. He's a great character before he, before he died. I loved him as a character in the show. It's just my opinion of his character is that I just feel like he was just a little bit too cowardly. He wasn't like a straight up. He was sly. You know what I'm saying? He was sly. He was the fox. You know what I'm saying? He figured out other smart, trickery ways to get things done. Um, so he wasn't your your Barristan Selmy. He wasn't your Robert Baratheon. He wasn't your Stannis Baratheon. He wasn't your Ned Stark. You know what I'm saying? Like, those guys, they charge into battle. They get shit done. No trickery. I'm coming for that ass. That's the kind of person... Um, that I'm talking about when I, where I say he's a little bit of a car. Anybody who's sly and, you know, they can trick you, they use trickery to beat you, I consider those people to be a little bit too cowardly, like they're not straight up, like they'll stab you in the back. You get what I'm saying? Like they're not going to straight up be like, yo, come get this one-on-one -on -one work. You know what I'm saying? They're not like that. You know what I'm saying? They'd rather catch you off guard, stab you in the back, just like what he did by setting up the phrase to kill all those Starks to kill, um, to kill Rob and Catelyn and all of them, um, the Red Wedding, right? So that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that Tywin is bad, but that's what I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, man, learning about this stuff can, it can drive you nuts because I'm like, I know that HBO and, and the thing about it is this, the thing about it is this is what I don't understand. If I am the head of HBO and see the shitload of money that this show is bringing in, why am I in a rush to end the damn show? Why would I be? In, I don't. I, up until this day, I'm trying to understand why this thing is being rushed. Is it because they want to finish before the books drop? What is it? Somebody can tell me that in the comment section because there's a missing link here somewhere. It's, it's got to be that... It can't be that this, the show was getting too expensive to make because it ain't that. Because this show is making billions with a B, okay? This show is making billions, okay? So, I know it ain't a money problem. This show is a freaking phenomenon around. It's a world wide people from all over the world watch the show so it's not just an american thing or an english thing or a french thing or it's nothing like that it's a worldwide phenomenon okay so my whole situation with this is is like man they should have milked this shit they should have milked them titties boy milk this cow till the titties fall off you get what I'm trying to say, bruh? I just don't understand what's the rush. I mean, but what people don't understand, and that's why you see, that's why I love certain anime so much, and I hate to bring up anime here, but anime does a very good job of fleshing out characters, and I'm glad that when it comes on to um, the written, which is the manga, and the actual anime series, the anime stay true as much as they can to the show. No matter how many episodes it take, they will say the exact same things most of the time. They might change a little bit here and there in anime, but it's not very much that they change, right? So, I just don't understand what was the rush to end, to, to end Game of Thrones. I don't get it. Are they rushing to the prequel? I I don't know. Somebody in the comment section, please let me know what, what that was all about. Let's continue. But you guys get what I'm saying. Just learning about this stuff is just like, dude, this is one of my favorite characters. And that's the reason why I'm pissed off so much. Because I'm like, they could have done so much more with him. Ten, ten sons of Harpy in, 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 in shoot, in, in a tube, they shouldn't be able to take out Barristan. I don't care. Little knives, I, I don't care. A dude should be able to take those guys out, no problem, and survive that fight. Freaking Grey Worm survived that shit, bruh. Come on, man. The famous tourney that sparked the events that would lead to Robert's Rebellion. He fell in love with Ashara Dane, and even in the current story, still thinks back to her. He kept his feelings silent, remembering his vows as a brother of the Kingsguard. They swear to remain celibate. But he says that if he had won that tourney, he would have chosen her as the Queen of Love and Beauty. 
Not only does he regret losing to Rhaegar because he couldn't give Ashura that title, but Rhaegar defeating him in the final tilt resulted to Lyanna Stark receiving that title and sparking the rebellion. During Robert's rebellion, he fought alongside Rhaegar in the Trident and was wounded by an arrow, a spear, and a sword. Robert Baratheon respected him like everyone else in the kingdom and had his maester tend to him. Robert even parted him and named him Lord Commander of his Kingsguard. He continued to serve with loyalty up until Joffrey came in power. This is my favorite part of the story. When the mental kid became king, he dismissed Sir Barristan, claiming he was old and unable to even defend Robert against the boar. You have served the realm long and faithfully. Every man and woman in the Seven Kingdoms owes you thanks. That but it is time moment. to decide your armor <laughs> and your sword. It is time to rest and look back with pride on your many years of service. Your Grace, the King's Guard is a sworn brotherhood. Our vows are taken for life. Only death relieves us of our sacred trust. You're too old to protect anybody. Your Grace. The Council has determined that Sir Jamie Lannister will take your place as Lord Commander of the King's Guard. The man who profaned his blade with the blood of the King he had sworn to defend. Careful, sir. I am mm. a knight. I shall die a knight. A naked knight, apparently. <laughs> this, uh... Even now I could cut through the five of you like carving a cake. How can... How? How, bro? How do you make a character drop a line like that and then you kill him in a... F in alley? How? Come on, man. Here, boy. Melt it down and add it to the others. Even at his old age, he was probably still more skilled than the rest of the Kingsguard. Jamie Lannister with both hands would be a good fight, however. What Joffrey and Cersei truly wanted was the Hound on the Kingsguard watching over Joffrey because of his loyalty at the time, and Jaime appointed Lord Commander. This dismissal really set Barristan off since the vow they take is till death and was a huge insult on him even after his loyalty. For a second time, we see the human side to Barristan. In his rage, he insinuates Stannis will sit on the Iron Throne and storms out. But even during his rage, he does his duty and writes in the White Book, the book where all the actions of the Kingsguard are recorded by the Lord Commander. Joffrey wants him arrested for what he said, and even without a sword, Selmy kills the men after him. After years of serving kings, he believed- Bruh. I'm gonna be pausing this shit. I, I mean, it's a 10 minute video turned into a 30 minute video. This is absolutely ridiculous. I'm mad. I'm pissed off by this. They should have never killed this guy in, in the show. Never. The guy is taking out people after him with his beer. Bruh. This is like, it, it, it's like you had, you had Goku and you killed him. This, this, this is what you get. You got, you had Goku in, in, in Game of Thrones and you killed him. That, that's what you did. HBO or D and D. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just saying he was not given any justice in this show, man. Character development, nothing, nothing. Get one of my favorite characters in the show, man. The man is out here. They sent guys to take him out. Take him out. I'm done. He were unfit. He decides to find a king worthy of a sword. From here, we know what happens next. He initially went to join Viserys, but after he found out he died, he served Daenerys.
you my life, sir. The honor is mine. My green. One of the most badass Penis. moments. I know him. That's one of the greatest fighters the Seven Kingdoms has ever seen. So there are some notable many. differences with how he served her, though. I mean, so many lines. So many lines in the show setting up this guy to be the monster that he is in the books. And they just throw him away. They just throw away his character, bro. Now I fully understand why people are so mad about his character. When I was watching the show, when they killed him. Because I never really grasped. The, 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 ooh, it's blowing my mind. So much they could have done with this character, man. So much. He didn't initially tell her who he was in the books. Under the name Arston Whitebeard, Selmy traveled with Danny until he was sure she didn't inherit her father's madness. He also didn't want the Lannisters knowing where he was and what he was doing. Without Viserys' life, Barristan became her only connection to her family's true history. He became her Lord Commander of the Queen's Guard, and when Danny flies off with Drogon, he runs things as the Hand of the Queen instead of being killed by the Sons of the Harpy, like in the show. Marie is in a lot worse shape than it was in the show, and the last book ends with Selmy preparing for war against Yonkai. I just hope he stays alive until Daenerys returns to Marine, because I always liked their conversations about past Targaryens. And that's the story of Barristan the Badass. I've wanted to make this video for a long time, and even though it isn't the most original topic, I hope you guys enjoyed his story as much as I did. My <sighs> what can I say? What can I say? You guys know, if you've watched my reactions, how I feel about Barristan Selmy. You know that he's one, he, 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 bef uh, before he died, he was one of my favorite characters in the show. He was definitely in my top five, even though he didn't get a lot of screen time. He was just one of my favorite characters because people who make an impact in TV TV shows, you never forget those moments. And that moment when he walked out, when they dismissed him from the King's Guard, and he walked out, that imprinted on my brain because the actor delivered that scene, man. And it's like, I was never like fond of him before um, up until that moment because you know they talked they talked about like the conversations he had with Robert he still wasn't imprinted on me like that you know what I'm saying like but that moment man the way how he walked out the things he said I mean you cannot forget that moment that moment was just epic it's one of the best scenes ever in Game of Thrones the series history you know and they just wasted his character, man. Honestly. Honest to God, they wasted his character. They could have done so much more with him. I mean, they could have let him... <sighs> I mean, if you're going to kill Barristan Selmy, if, if, say, for instance, the next book, because they say it left off with him still in Marine or whatever, um, in the books. So if in the next book, George decides to kill him, I'm pretty sure George is not going to write him being killed by some dumbass Sons of Harpy shit. It shit is pissing me off, man, because I, I, um, it's just certain things that I think that they could have done so much better. Don't get me wrong, but don't get it twisted, though, thinking that I hate the show because I don't. It's just that certain things that I think they could have done, they should have milked this cow till it's dry. And they, and they, they didn't do that. And I just didn't understand why you got shows on TV going on. 18, 19, even 20 seasons. Game of Thrones could have been one of those shows, but they just wasted it. They, they To me, as much as I'm enjoying the show, I just want so much more because now that I'm learning about the history and the lore, and I kept saying this in most of my videos, why in God's name is this series ending? There's so much more to it. So much more to it. Even though, yes, I know they're planning a prequel. I know. I know there's, there's a prequel coming out. Um, I think it's... Um, 
uh, I think they said uh, they just must have started. They started film filming it. I think in February or something. I've been looking stuff up. Okay, this Game of Thrones got me. You know what I'm saying? My feelings. But anyways, um, yeah. So this has been a 30 minute video, man, because I I had to talk about it. I had to. I had to hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have nothing else to say. I said all I wanted to say during the video. Hope you guys don't mind me pausing and talking about it. Um, let me guys know. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Of course, the first video you're watching, of course, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you know when the next Game of Thrones lore video comes out. Also, leave a like on this video. Really helps the channel to grow. We just hit 900 subscribers, baby. Let's go. Only 90 something more to go to hit the big goals. 1,000 subscribers where I can choose to apply to the YouTube partnership, which is I'm going to do. But as I told you guys, I'm not going to monetize any of these videos as long as it's I'm reacting to stuff that I know, like, you know, TV shows, anime. I'm not going to be monetizing any. So you won't have no ads on none of those videos. I'm not going to decrease the quality of what I've been doing for the past four months to have ads on the video. Like I'm not going to do that. Um, plus it's other people's work, other people's intellectual work. So I do not want to go that far as to try to make money off of other people's work. That is wrong because I know what that feels like. People stealing your property and stuff like that. Um, so I'm just not going to do that. It's just my decision. Um, from a morals point of view, um, you know, I wish they would just allow us to just up upload parts of the show. Not much. You know what I'm saying? I know. And I can admit to myself that I kind of abused the Game of Thrones when I was watching the series and I was uploading it when I was doing four five, six. I think for the last episode that I did, I did like seven parts, which is like almost the entire episode. And I kind of abused that. You know what I'm saying? So if somebody finds my channel, they kind of can, in certain ways, they can watch the whole freaking series on my channel, which is absolutely ridiculous. You know, just me just admitting that, you know what I'm saying? Um, but people really enjoyed it. I'm not going to monetize any of those videos. If YouTube tells me to take them down, I will be taking them down. If HBO hits me up, I'm going to be taking them down. It's not an issue. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to fight them and be like, oh, it's my, I spent all this time. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's their thing. You know what I'm saying? And I, and if I'm being completely honest, as I said, I did a kind of abuse the whole system of the 10 minutes per upload. Right. So I'm just saying I'm just being honest with myself, honest with you guys. Um, So I'm just saying anyways. You already know who it is. Boy, I tell everybody, don't forget to comment. I'm waiting for those comments, okay? Thank you guys once again for 900 subscribers. Thank you guys. Um, we're going to we're gonna be doing a lot more once I hit 1,000 um, subscribers on this channel. I'm going to, I have a lot of things planned. I have a giveaway plan when, once I hit 1,000 subscribers, I have a giveaway plan. Some of you, I don't care where you live. If you win the giveaway, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. I'm not going to let you guys know what it is yet. Okay. So I'll let you guys know, um, what it is. Um, it could be something digital also. I'm still just racking it up in my brain. Hopefully we hit a thousand subscribers by the end of next, next week, because I've been averaging somewhere around a hundred subscribers a week. So I'm hoping that by the end of next weekend or so, we will hit a thousand subscribers channel is growing and it's all thanks to you guys. Thank shout out to my anime fans out there. They, they're really coming around. Um, the anime videos are blowing up on the channel. Game of Thrones videos blowing up on the channel. Everything is just people are just finding me. And that's all thanks to you guys. The interaction on the channel has been awesome. So thank you guys once again. It's your boy Therabyte Reacts and peace.